Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create full depth epoxy bow ties using two different methods. Like any epoxy project, we start by mixing some epoxy. For this project I'm using a deep pour epoxy. Stir the epoxy thoroughly. This is a great project to use up extra leftover epoxy, but for my purposes I'll pour out a little from another larger pour. Next is choosing a color. Using Mika powder, I'll make two different colored bow ties. To reduce the air, remove the bubbles using a torch prior to pouring. Next, measure the thickness of the wood. Check it in several spots to make sure you have the correct depth. Build a form and mark the depth of the wood on the sides. If you don't know how to properly build a form, please watch my other video, Step-by-Step -step Epoxy Rivet Pour, Part 2. Once the depth is marked, pour the epoxy until it is full, right to the mark. Here you could layer leftover epoxy over and over again until it is full enough. Stir in any patterns and remove the bubbles using a torch. Once the epoxy is fully cured, remove it from the form. This will leave you with a brick of cured epoxy, ready for bow ties. The first of the two methods I'm using to make the bow ties is a template and a bushing setup. I use two sided tape to secure the template and a router to cut along the edges. Using the bit included in the set, I make several passes until the bow ties are fully cut. The other, obviously faster method I'll be using is a benchtop CNC with a quarter inch end mill. I sand all the edges smooth to 220 grit using a regular sheet sander. Next to polish the epoxy, I use Merca Abrolon pads and sand them all to 4000 grit. Finally, I shine up the edges like the top by oiling them and allowing them to dry. Now we have some beautifully colored high gloss bow ties ready to be used. The next step is to cut the wood around the crack. First I lay out which bow ties to use and where. For the template you simply place it on the wood and put the bushing on the router. Recut the same template you used before. For the CNC I simply change it to an inside cut of the already cut bow tie shape. The next thing I do is prep the wood. I start at 120 grit and work all the way up till 220 grit till the wood is ready and smooth for the bow ties. Once the wood is ready, I attach the bow ties. Since it's not wood, you can't use wood glue. Now that the bow ties are in and nice and flat, the wood has a slight cupping. So even though the bow ties are the same thickness, they need to be sanded perfectly flush. Because I'm going to end up sanding them again, I'm only going to sand them to 180 grit at this point. Once the bow ties are set and flat, I'll fill any small tear out around the bow ties. While I'm at it, I'll also fill the tiny knot. All right, time for the final sand. Getting the epoxy polished back to 4,000 grit is key for getting it shining again. Working through the sandpaper and then back through the Abalon pads will get it looking just like new. You can see it shining up from 500 to 4,000 grit just in these few seconds. Finally, cutting board oil is applied, which helps shine the wood and the epoxy. Once dry, you have beautiful full depth epoxy bow ties. You may have seen other makers pour epoxy in bow tie shaped holes, but as you can see, these look great from both the top and the bottom. This is a very unique way to prevent further wood splitting and use up that leftover epoxy. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.